Hi, well, welcome to this video, which is going to be about uh, the Lucas Magneto RS1 type. Just wanted to do a, sh a short film about Mag and how it all fits together, uh, various component parts. Um, there's also uh, a booklet, which is uh, re well, you know, reprinted, but an, of an original type uh, that explains about all. Uh, Lucas Mags and um, as a short section on the RS1 gives you a breakdown. Uh, I think there's a list of parts, components, things like that. Useful thing to have. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take this apart, really show you the various bits inside. This one doesn't work. Unfortunately, the the coil itself is um, is faulty. It needs to be rewound. So that will happen eventually. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm still keeping hold of it, obviously, because I hope to get it working one day soon. I do have another one actually on my engine that works, but this is kind of a spare stroke backup, which, like I say, I intend to get it working because it's probably going to be helpful to have two just in case anything happens to the other one. So, uh, yeah, so I'll just take the top off now and have a look inside and then break it down a bit further and then I've got some newer components, new replacement parts which you can buy, you can still buy quite a lot of um, spares for this uh, this and other sort of types of mag uh, fortunately so I've, I've got a couple of bits to show you that you could you know replace yourself on these and you know maybe improve or get an old one working that doesn't at the moment So the top cover is literally, there's two machine screws in there, that lifts off and then that will expose the coil itself and the condenser. This one is a, um, a newer condenser, you see it's not the original one that was in there. Um, that has been replaced. I was hoping it was going to be something simple, but it now turns out that the actual coil itself is duff, and um, you can get them rewound. Uh, that is expensive, but the cheaper option is if if you've got one to exchange. So if you've got a faulty one, you can send it off, and they will send you a replacement that's already been rewound, <clears throat> and that comes in probably a hundred pounds or or thereabouts. If you're going to have the whole thing rewound. Professionally, yeah, you could be talking hundreds. Um, so it is a very expensive job. But I say, if you've got one, it's, it's helpful because obviously you can send it off and get a, a replacement. Um, but again, these are hard to get hold of, so it's it's not as straightforward as it might seem. But uh, that's that's the coil there. Uh, I should have mentioned as well. I didn't, but you know, obviously normally you'd have a your cog on the front. Um, for the chain drive that is just held on with a nut and a washer that's normally obviously because it's a tapered shaft here that that's sort of wedged wedged on like an interference fit um, but you'll need or the best thing to use is I use the three three leg puller which you know you can hook round the round the actual cog itself and then locate the actual pin against this and wind it out that way. That's the best way to do it without actually damaging the the cog itself, which you could potentially do if you try and prise it off with a screwdriver behind it or sort of wedge it off. You, it could be um, could be a bit tricky. So uh, the next step, uh, the coil is held in with these two straps, um, and again there's four screws there that hold that in, and it's also obviously connected into the. Uh, wire in there which needs to come out um, but I'll do that next right so there you go that's um, screws undone obviously the the, the the magnetized part of this is more or less quite difficult to get it out you just probably just need to 
get a screwdriver and there you go and there that comes out and that is so that's the coil um, as you can imagine it's quite a, a complicated job to wind one of these a lot of wire a lot of time that's that's really why these are expensive to get done to get them rewound it's a time consuming job I don't think the actual wire itself is that expensive it's not you know the cost of the materials isn't great it's, it's the time spent doing it um, and I think they're sort of <clears throat> they're baked and coated in resin or something but um, yeah it's, it's, it's a specialist job really so unfortunately that's not a, a, an easy uh, easy fix uh, and then inside once you look inside then you can see uh, you can see the rotor now which obviously turns uh, that is again that's magnetized you can fit as that goes round that that sort of has a sort of a bit of a tension which then sort of goes off as the as the magnetic poles sort of apart and then come back together again so but that's that's the bit that sort of rotates from the drive from the engine sorry keep moving it about um, so yeah that's that bit on the back points cover that's a little spring clip there again you can buy a new uh, you can buy, buy a new spring clip these are still sold um, so that just sort of lifts up and pushes out of the way uh, then there's the actual points cover itself again you can buy these new you can get these in you know um, from Various places that sell sell these remanufactured parts. Bit of a tricky job to get it out. There you go. So that comes out, and then in there is that's the points. There you can see the points. Um, these are ah, this set of points is a, is a new set of points that's been put in there. Uh, again, like I say, I've, I'll replace the points and the condenser when I first got this mag in the hope uh, of getting it to spark. Um, but yeah, I've still got issues with the coil so. There you go, but when I got this, this was filthy, so this has been cleaned up. In fact, it didn't even really turn. I had to take the, the rotor out as well. There was loads of, sort of rubbish in there. It's filthy, so it has, it has all been cleaned up. Um, it's not too bad, but there you go. So, yeah, that's that bit. And then the next bit to get the rotor out, uh, there's obviously, again, there's three screws here. These are, <clears throat> oh, in this one, in this instance, on this Magneto, this, these were really hard to get out. I actually, I used a impact driver to get them to shift because they were sort of um, really were tight in there and obviously not been out for years so that's what I had to do to get those out so that'll be the next job take those three out um, that cover we can remove um, and obviously that expose the rotor and there's bearings as well inside there there's a set of bearings each end um, but yeah so we'll do that next Okay, so that's the three screws removed. There is, you can see there, I don't know if you can see, there is a, um, there's like a rubber ring, rubber oil seal that goes around there. Um, that's really just designed, I think, just to stop um, crap getting inside. That's a little bit perished because it's old, but I've not seen a replacement that you can buy for those, but I suppose you could find something, but, uh, so I'll just try and get this, this plate off now. So there, there you go, that, as you can see that needed a, uh, a tap with just a hammer there just to to free that up, um, so yeah, so now you can see um, the bearing there, which should sit in the actual ring there. But that's, that's come out. These bearings are replaceable components, so you can you can still buy replacement bearings for these, which is a good thing. Um, they do wear out, obviously, because you know you think the amount of revolutions this thing does when it's running and you know in its, in its service life they can probably quite easily wear out so 
that is replaceable I may when I eventually get this thing running or I may do that as well because uh, there's, no, there's no harm and they're pretty cheap to buy so that's that bit exposed you can then drive the rotor out really just by using a drift on here or something and just just knocking it out I'll just try this um, plastic hammer there you go it starts to move and hopefully a couple of taps starting to move forward there you go so this is the rotor now out again with the cam which is attached to the back of the rotor that's the bit obviously that opens and closes the points and then you've got the uh, the other bearing at the back the, notice that the rear bearing is actually smaller than the front there are two different types so if you were to buy replacements I think one's E13 one's E15 not sure which is which but um, again you can buy those I'll, I'll put a link up in the uh, in the description um, station re-engine parts do a lot of bits and pieces for it the, there are other other ones on there um, magneto suppliers what have you uh, so I'll put a couple of those in the description um, in case you wanted to know where you can get some bits so yeah there goes the rotor and obviously without the rotor in uh, the actual body of the mag itself you see in there I say when I got this originally it was filthy it was rusty the actual rotor was rusted inside this body uh, it all had to be sort of cleaned out but you know as it was it never actually sparked anyway because of the problem with the coil so um, but it's quite a robust thing as you can see it's solid so you know looked after I'm sure you'll get plenty of service out of them no problem at all no problem at all but so the, the last little thing really is this little book this is the say it's a reprint of an original type thing but it's it's, it's it's got a brief description of the RS1 there's other Lucas Magnetos in here as well some of the older ones like the motorbike uh, ones or the automotive ones um, and it's only a couple of three quid um, that's worth worth the money just for a little bit of information and then I've got some replacement components just a couple really obviously uh, you've already seen there's the that's a, a, a newish coil that I've got um, you know that's that's fairly recent there's another one there same thing um, from the same supplier but it's obviously slightly different type which I've got more recently uh, that's waiting to go on possibly but um, so that's that again I have because uh, I would say because I've got another mag currently on my D type um, I've bought say another condenser and some points to eventually do that one but at the moment that's working so I'll, I'll leave it as is but you can see in there there's a set of contact breaker points for the you know, RS1 again I don't know three or four quid not very expensive there are some as you can see in there the replacement machine screws for this top cover because you can see the, the screws in there are pretty manky and a little bit sort of damaged where they sort of got stuck and the screwdriver damage to them so there's some nice new shiny machine screws also with this as well the top um, you could because quite often you see it's scuffed it's dirty that discolors you could give it a light rub down with some wet and dry and then just give it a spray that's what I did with my other one uh, just gave it a spray with some like matte black or gloss black or whatever you prefer really just to um, try and make it look you know a little bit more appealing and uh, not so not so battered you say this one is is you know slightly battered uh, and then obviously you've got the the ignition lead uh, I think originally my original mag that I got in my engine had a red spark plug lead that had been took off a car didn't look very nice um, not very authentic really so that has been replaced uh, with a 
kind of similar to this like plastic sheathed one but you can get uh, slightly more authentic this is uh, kind of braided I don't know if you can see that so it's like an older style like the old electrical cables really but it's a braided sort of uh, material on the outside not really good at focusing this sorry um, but yeah so that's and obviously I think you get you can order a get a meter or whatever cut to length and then you can chop off whatever you require put that in there you can also get um, I don't think I've got it oh no I have tell a lie I have got it which is the brass fitting for the end so once you've cut yours to length and fitted it you can eventually not you know not like that do it properly but you can put the uh, put the brass fitting on and I've also got a brass cap which you can screw onto the end of the spark plug makes it look slightly more you know your authentic rather than having a sort of an old uh, car spark plug lead moulded plastic which doesn't look very very good so that's it basically that's the Lucas RS1 it's not that complicated as you can see really um, I know nothing about them or at least I only know a little bit about them uh, and that's what I found out so I, I would sort of suggest if you've got one you know have a go um, you might be able to get yours working um, there's a little bit more to it than and meets the eye you need to make sure that the rotor is put back in uh, the right way um, but you know it's, it's not it's not a terribly complicated item um, and it's probably worth if you've got one uh, or if you get one with an engine that's, that's you know a bit bruised and battered you can certainly have a go at trying to cl clean it up and uh, you might be lucky you might get a spark but uh, Hopefully, I say I'll get the coil done, and this will be then a good spare which I can keep in case I have problems with my other one. Or obviously, if I ever get another engine, then I could use that. If you see these now on uh, on auction sites, eBay, etc., they're they're very expensive. They go for quite a lot of money, especially if they're in good condition. Um, obviously, these are set up for. Or well, this one is set up for uh, clockwise rotation. For a, you know, for a, for a clock, clockwise engine, you can get them uh, set up for uh, anti-clock, and you can convert them as two because it all is basically you just need to adjust the position of the cam uh, to set it up for um, reverse rotation. So sometimes, if you, if you if you can get hold of a reverse rotation one, and although you've got a clockwise engine, you could then set it up to run for your for your engine okay yeah so that's it really um, but I hope it's been useful uh, it just shows you gives you an idea of what goes into taking it apart uh, it's not rocket science really it's fairly straightforward so have a go um, you know you've got nothing to lose and uh, thanks for watching okay cheers <laughs>